a lot is happening in WWE. This is your boy Vic, and this is Vic Plays Games. Earlier today, WWE announced that it will be leaving Fox at the end of next year to go back to USA Network for a five-year, $1.4 billion deal, an increased deal from the $1 billion deal the WWE inked with Fox in 2019. After this shocking news, which also saw that WWE would be shopping Raw and NXT, meaning Raw and NXT would be leaving the USA Network, with Raw potentially not even being on Monday nights anymore, which is disgusting. <laughs> Absolutely disgusting work right there. There was a slew of WWE releases. Now I told y'all in my video recently about the UFC and WWE merger that this could happen. I said a smack dab in the middle of that video. Feel free to click on it on the top right corner. But I digress. Here are the name of some of the releases from WWE today. WWE lifer Dolph Ziggler. Future Hall of Famer Shelton Benjamin, the gold standard. Elias. Emma. Mustafa Ali, who's supposed to be fighting and no mercy in a few days for the North American title. Rick Boogs, Aaliyah, who has the fastest win in WWE history, and Top Dollar of Hit Row. Not B-Fab or Ashanti, just Top Dollar. As well as Riddick Moss. Yo, it's 5.20 p.m., I'm editing the video, and they just announced some more releases. This includes Dana Brooke, Mason Mansoor, and Shanky. Bruh, this is gonna be the last edit I make to this video because I'm not about to keep going back and forth to Twitter or else this video is never gonna come out. But yeah, bruh, Dana Brooke, that's kind of sad. And she was still trucking on, former 24 7 champion. Never really found a footing in the women's division. Honestly, I don't think they really tried hard enough. Maybe they just never really liked her that much. So the fact that she made it this long is impressive. That's no disrespect to her, by the way. That's just more so. An indictment of how WWE does things. Mace and Mansoor. Mace is of course infamous for being a part of Retribution. Retribution is one of the worst brought together factions in WWE history. It did a number on everyone's career in that group, especially Mustafa Ali. Mace, big dude, athletic, never gave him the proper chance. The only person from that group that truly revived their career, well, people I would say that revived their career was Dijak and Mia Yim. And Mia Yim literally had to leave the company, go back to Impact, and then get re-signed, right? And she's currently doing stuff with AJ Styles. So she's done a decent job. She's still not where she should probably be either, honestly. Mansoor, I feel bad for him just due to the fact that he is actually better in the ring than people give him credit for. He's actually pretty decent. He's just been strapped with lazy gimmicks. And honestly, he was a lazy signing from WWE. They just signed him because he's from Saudi Arabia. In order to entice Saudi Arabian fans with the partnership that WWE has with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia at the moment. But now I think WWE and TKO, they're looking at it and they're like, well, we don't necessarily need someone from Saudi Arabia to sell out Saudi Arabia. And they just dumped him like that. This stuff is sick, dog. I ain't gonna hold you. And Shanky, you know, very big dude. Oh, shoot. They released Commander Aziz, too? Dang. Yo. Yo, this is actually crazy. I ain't gonna hold you. I'm making in-live edits while I edit the video. I was about to export this audio to iMovie, bro. And they made more releases. Like, I BS you not. This is crazy. Now let's go over some of these, right? Riddick Moss did not know that he was released until he got on Twitter. He literally found out he was released on Twitter from Sean Ross Sapp. Didn't even pick up his phone. This is disgusting work right here. Dolph Ziggler, WWE lifer. Dolph Ziggler has stated numerous times that he never wanted to leave WWE. Knowing Dolph Ziggler, he would have potentially taken a pay cut and taken on a role as a manager instead of leaving. Like, that's how much he loves WWE, and they still cut him. Dolph could have left for AEW or Japan years ago. 
but decided to stay because of his loyalty to WWE and look at how they repaid him. Tough world, man. Shelton Benjamin, bruh, many highlights over his career. They never really booked him properly in any of his tenures with WWE, unfortunately, and it sucks. But you know, man, respect to Shelton Benjamin, one of the all-time greats. Elias just confirmed online that he was Ezekiel the whole time, which should shock no one that has a brain. But all jokes aside, man, Elias is another guy that they never really booked properly when he was at his peak. There was a time he had the number one album on iTunes. People were chanting Walk With Elias everywhere. And in typical WWE fashion, they let him go cold and he never recovered. Aaliyah has the fastest win in WWE now for no reason. Like when she initially beat Natalia in like a little over a second, it looked like they were going to do some good stuff with her, but in typical Vince writing, they just replayed and did the same thing over and over and over again, and the crowd got annoyed with her. It wasn't Aaliyah's fault, honestly. Looking at her in the ring, she wasn't really bad in the ring. She had a cute personality. A lot of people thought she was attractive. It makes sense for her to have been on TV. They just wrote her poorly. Top Dollar, honestly, Hit Row has not hit the same since the release of Swerve. I don't know what Top Dollar does now. It's crazy because a few years ago, he was like a very highly ranked prospect in the WWE system. And now he's getting released before BFAP and Ashanti Adonis. That says a lot. I kind of feel bad for homie. I feel bad for everybody. I feel bad for Rick Boogs. I feel bad for Emma. I feel bad for Mustafa Ali, especially. Mustafa Ali from this list is someone that people recently thought could be a WWE champion within the past four years. Like in 2019, a lot of people were pushing for him to win the world title. Then, of course, in 2020, the whole pandemic happened. People thought he was going to win Money in the Bank. Then he had that break where he wasn't able to compete in the match. And he just hasn't been booked properly since, right? It seems like in NXT, they were building him back up. And this is an example of what I've been telling y'all that Vince is back in control. Because there's no way that Shawn Michaels and Triple H, who have been doing a great job with NXT, a lot of people have argued that NXT is the best brand right now. I've been thinking WWE's been on a little good run recently. There's no way that WWE writers in NXT do all of that hard work to build up this match between Dom, Dragon Lee, and Mustafa Ali just for them to release Mustafa Ali a few days before the bout. Doesn't make sense. So this is clearly a higher up decision from TKO, which is essentially now Vince McMahon and some other people from the merger with UFC and WWE. This does not include Triple H or Shawn Michaels. As I told you guys before, Triple H was removed from the board at the merger. None of Vince McMahon's family including people that have worked with the company in a large capacity over the years, including his still wife, Linda McMahon, his son, Shane, or his daughter, Stephanie, as well as son-in-law, Paul Levesque, also known as Triple H, are currently in the board of the company. Now, I know people will also want me to talk about the news of the disclaimer that TKO filed to the SEC, basically saying that Vince McMahon could be bad for business. I would not be surprised if Vince and his lawyers stated that this disclaimer had to be put out before the companies merged. I don't see anything happening to Vince, man. I will not believe it until I see it. This guy is Teflon. He is like the boogeyman. It does not matter what you throw on him. He just tosses it off his shoulder, bro. Don't care, bro. I really don't. You guys can make the arguments that you want, but yeah, man. Nah, I don't see Vince going nowhere. These decisions made today are clearly from him. How do y'all feel? Let me know in the comments below, bruh. This is your boy Vic, and this is Vic Plays Games.